What is up everyone, Dan the Cardman back again. I hope you all are doing very well. Welcome to another weekly news video. Now we've got a few things to talk through today, including, you know, backyard breaks and this apparent hanky panky hotbox stuff going on with them and their hits that they're getting. We'll then touch on Sports Card Radio's live stream that was in response to that, which is, in my opinion, a fantastic thing for the hobby. And we need more of this open dialogue and discourse between, you know, people of differing opinions. We'll get to that in a second. And then we'll also touch on Gemrate why they're the good guy shout out of the week and why you know, the work they're doing is so fantastic for the hobby and why it indicates some really, really good things for PSA long term. Now we'll touch on the backyard break situation. I'm not going to talk through too much of this just yet because I think most of you are already aware of this. But if you're not, essentially Triple Crown 24 and the Collectibles Guru off the back of him did some insight off the back of basically backyard breaks hitting, you know, the best cards in a few high-end products. And they basically got a big chunk of them. And they implied through this research that the math behind that have actually happening is almost astronomical. It's like one in half a million shot. And this article by Sports Car Radio, it basically takes information from different content creators and people like that that have done the research. And it, it seems pretty damning in my opinion. And they did that live stream today off the back of this. I won't share my thoughts on this just yet because I want to do a video on Monday or Tuesday next week, my regular Monday or Tuesday video, because I need to go in a bit more of a deep dive for you. But I will say this, please check out the live stream. Please check out this link. These numbers, these numbers are pretty damning. You know, from an eye test perspective, I think the accusations have always been there towards breakers getting hot boxes from distributors and from manufacturers. Whether that stuff is true or not um, is hard to prove, but seeing something like this is very, very compelling. And there was lots of good discussion points today. But my video that I want to prep a little bit more for indicates, or it's basically they're trying to squash some of these things that people are saying to try and diminish this. They're trying to say, no, this can happen because or this can't happen, sorry, because people at Panini wouldn't allow this to happen. There's nobody. There's no way Panini know what's happening, right? Or there's no way an employee would steal the card, or there's no way that an employee would mark the boxes, or there's no way that whatnot would be involved with this. Where's the incentive? I'm gonna take you through each of those scenarios in my video in the coming days, so please keep an eye out for that, just because it needs a bit more prep time on my part, and I basically need to do that to give you guys the respect you deserve by coming at you with, you know, factual information in a, a properly prepared for video. So please, you know, keep an eye out for that. Me personally, I'm still undecided on whether this is hanky panky or not. You know, the numbers are very, very compelling. It could just be coincidence, but again, I'm 50-50. I think the twins out at Sports Card Radio themselves still said they were 50-50 when their live stream ended. You know, I'm probably in the same boat, probably leaning a bit more towards hanky panky, to be honest, just based on, you know, my understanding of business processes and things like that. I can see something like this you know, slipping through the cracks of Panini. I could see something like this slipping through the cracks of the distributors. I could see something like this from an incentive perspective about it, whatnot. I'm not saying those things are happening, but keep an eye out for my video because I'm going to talk you through each of those scenarios and where the incentive lies and basically why there's a plausible scenario at each of those steps within the process to allow something like this to happen. So please keep an eye out for that. Now, obviously the next thing to talk through is the Sports Card Radio live stream itself because this was primarily focused at talking about that matter. Now, this went for eight and a half hours, which was freaking crazy in my opinion. I, it started around 9 a.m. Australian time. I jumped on around an hour and a half in. So if you want to see me talk like an idiot, please check it out. Um, I had to drop off. I came back with my family function. The boys were still going, which is you know absolutely mental. But the thing I want to highlight from this is not just the fact that they spoke about you know the, the backyard break situation. It's the way in which they approached it. And things like these are so fantastic for the hobby, in my opinion, because they brought on people that agreed with them, that didn't agree with them, that sat in between, that were either collectors, they were you know breakers, they were content creators, they were collectors. Didn't matter who or what you were, or what you believe in, they had you on and allowed you to speak your mind. And that's the kind of thing we need within this hobby, right? Anybody that tries to say something like this live stream today is a bad thing, indicates that you are an idiot, in my opinion, because these kinds of things are fantastic. The more open discussion you can have within a hobby, like I said in my sports car radio video, where people call them haters um, from the other day, anytime you can have more things like this, it's better, right? Because people want to educate themselves, they want to uplift their knowledge, they want to knowledge share, they want to have, you know, a debate, but have a fair debate and and have and see if you can change each other's minds, right? Because that's what being an adult is all about. And the more hobby content we can have like this, the better. Because when you have people like the person in that thumbnail down below that continually block people of an, of an opposing view. It's like, who do you trust? Like, who do you trust? People like Sports Car Radio with this live stream or someone like that? You tell me your thoughts down in the comments below because anybody that tries to, you know, shield things away and create their own agenda and create their own narrative is not good for the hobby, in my opinion, or not good for anything in life. If you can't have the backbone to have an open discussion with someone, 
that speaks more about you than the person that does, in my opinion. So please share your thoughts on that down in the comment below. I hope we can have more conversations like this within the hobby because it's fantastic. It gives people opportunity to learn, improve themselves, educate themselves, or just have a good, honest, and open and fun conversation with others. So I think it's good. Let me know your thoughts if you tune in. I'd assume you did because they had like 18,000 people watch it in the end, which is freaking fantastic. I missed towards the back end of the stream because I was at a family function, but apparently it got pretty spicy around this portion of the video with regards to Backyard Anthony and Backyard Brad. So if there's anything that you want me to be aware of or timestamp, please share it down below as well because I will check it out. I didn't get to speak too much. I hope I didn't sound like an idiot. If I did, let me know. If I didn't, please also give me the support because I do like to overthink sometimes to be overly critical of myself. So yeah, be nice. <laughs> so the last thing I want to touch on is, you know, the good guy shout out of the week and that is Gemrate. Now I've mentioned these guys before on the channel, but the work they do is so freaking fantastic. So if you're not sure who Gemrate are, please go on Instagram and follow them immediately, then come back and watch the rest of this video because what they do is they take the information from the pop reports from each of these graders and present them to us as collectors, as enthusiasts within the hobby so we can get a bit of an understanding on the volume of cards being graded on a weekly and monthly basis. And it's not just limited to like a total perspective, as in PSA graded 59,500 cards this week. They also break it down into the specific category as an example by PSA. And even sometimes, I just clicked away, sorry, even sometimes the, the specific set, which is, you know, really freaking fantastic. So the more things we get like this within the hobby, the better. And sorry, I was on their story. I don't know why I'm clicking around like an idiot. So the more things we get like this, the better. And this is why they deserve the good guy shout out of the week, because this kind of information is, in my opinion, fantastic. And I feel like I said that already, but I can't underestimate or understate that enough. It is fantastic. You need to check them out if you're not already. But one thing I want to do flag off the back of watching these guys reports for the last, you know, six to 12 months or however long they've been doing it. I think they've been doing it longer than that, but that's as long as I've been paying very close attention to them is that despite all the talk around SGC, Beckett, CSG, CGC, PSA is still pumping out a lot more cards than them. And that's to be expected because if you look at PSA's workforce and look at the cards they've had submitted since the backlog, you know, they do have the opportunity to grade more cards. But what these other graders need to be very, very careful with, like I touched on in my video from last week with regards to SGC and lowering their prices, is that people have shown that they're still willing to go through PSA, even though it costs more, even though it takes longer to get their cards back. So the fact that they still have that mindset from collectors to use them speaks very, very worryingly to these other graders, in my opinion. The more competition we have, the better. But if PSA can get their new operation up and running on the East Coast, I believe is where their new operation is, or it might be the West Coast. If they can get that up and running, okay, and they can get rid of that backlog and they can actually start pumping out a million cards a month like they have been, they can start doing that on a regular basis and get their prices down. They can actually handle huge volumes. Who's still going to grade with these people? especially once PSA starts reducing their prices again. That that should scare these guys, right? And you can say what you want about, you know, SGC's cool looking case or the technology maybe that SGC, or sorry, CSG and CGC is trying to bring. That stuff only works for so long, right? The, the Colby has shown they still value PSA, both from a, you know, Mark Avell perspective and from a basically submission perspective. So, you know, those two things hold strong and these things start to fall away. What do you think is going to happen long term? I think PSA is very, they've got through this basically two years of backlog is what I'm trying to say, almost unscathed. And I've been very critical of them in the past. I think the guys like SGC and CSG have a really strong opportunity to, you know, rival them long term, particularly CSG. But again, PSA managed to get through this almost unscathed. So now that the hobby is booming again or about to start booming again, because we're still going through a dip, obviously. But when things go back to BAU, you know, PSA is almost going to be still at the king, still well clear of anyone else in second place. They're just going to run with it and have fun. So yeah, I hope you, hope you liked the video today. Let me know your thoughts on each of the matters we discussed. I know I did ramble at times. I say that all the time, but I'm, like I said a bit earlier, I'm overly critical of myself all the time. So yeah, please share your thoughts. Let me know what you've thought about the Sports Car Radio live stream. Let me know what you think about the backyard break situation. And please you know, keep an eye out for my video on Monday or Tuesday because I'm going to talk through each of those scenarios in detail and why there's you know, sufficient incentive and why things could be plausible at every single step within the process that would indicate somebody doing some hanky-panky to get backyard breaks, these cards in hand or these boxes in hand that contain these product hits. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.